Hey everyone, so a new AI video model has just dropped from stability.ai and it is pretty fantastic. And look, I know a lot of you hear stable diffusion and you start thinking it's going to involve a complicated workflow or you're going to need a powerful GPU to run it. But don't worry, I got you covered. Today, we're gonna to take a look at stable diffusion video, plus show you a number of different ways to run it, like even if you're on a Chromebook. Plus, we're gonna circle back to Final Frame, a tool that I have discussed here in the past, but there have been some updates and there's a roadmap to some pretty cool features that are coming up in the future. Okay, let's dive in. So stable diffusion video is image to video, currently at least. Text to video is coming, but at the time of this video, it has not been released yet. The model is described by stability as being trained to generate short video clips from image conditioning. Uh, it's trained to generate 25 frames at a resolution of 576 by 1024. There is another fine tune model that runs at 14 frames, but overall, yeah, I know what you're thinking, like 25 frames, what am I gonna do with that? Well, there are some tricks with that. We're gonna take a look at that in one second. But the thing is, is that those 25 frames can actually be pretty stunning. Uh, let's take a look at this example from Steve Mills. The fidelity and quality of these videos look pretty fantastic. You will notice that they run a little bit longer, somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three seconds. I'll explain how that's done in just a few minutes. But yeah, overall, it looks really, really, really good. I will give you that the car is a little bit on the wonky side, but maybe it was an icy day. Now, to be fair, Steve's outputs were upscaled and interpolated by Topaz.ai. If you're wondering how much of an effect that has, Max has actually provided us with a nice side-by-side -side comparison. The top version is obviously the straight out of the box stable diffusion, while the bottom is stable diffusion gone through Topaz. Just as a quick sidebar, you are looking at compressed video that has been recompressed onto YouTube. So this probably isn't the best thing to judge on. That said, I do think that you can probably see a noticeable difference between the two. Um, if you can't afford Topaz, which I totally understand, I do have a few suggestions on how to upscale and interpolate that aren't quite as pricey. Uh, we'll get to those in just a little bit. Anu Akash put together a really cool side-by-side -side comparison of stable diffusion video to the other various image to video platforms. In terms of action and motion on the left-hand side, I thought all three did a pretty serviceable job. Uh, Runway did lose that candle in the middle, although if, at the beginning of it, it almost kind of looks like the kid is blowing the cake out, uh, but that fork or whatever that is on this side just does kind of vanish. I do appreciate on the right-hand video that Runway kind of changed this kid's expression as he's making this mess into like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble here. Now, one other downside is the fact that we don't actually have camera controls yet in Stable Diffusion video, although those will be coming soon via custom LoRa's. That said, we do have controls for the overall level of motion. Once again, Anu Akash puts together this comparison, showcasing various levels of motion control. As we can see here, Motion 50 kind of has that level of speed that I think we've all kind of gotten used to with image to video, um, whereas Motion 180 and Motion 255, uh, that has a lot more dynamics and speed to it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of early Pika, uh, back when that was really, really crazy wild, but far more temporally coherent. And despite the shorter clip length, I do think that if you lean into that, you can get some really creative results, as Purs did here by taking a number of stock and creative common images, animating those and creating a collage. The speed of everything kind of creates a really nice kind of commercial feel to it. Now, one big thing with stable diffusion video is its understanding of 3D space, which is probably why we'll see more coherent faces and characters as this model moves forward. On a very basic level, Kai Zhang was able to illustrate this by uploading uh, you know, three images of that sunflower, feeding that into stable diffusion video, and now we have you know, a 360 turnaround. A more practical look is this example image that Stability had posted, kind of a, I don't know, sort of like Zelda-esque inspired image. Um, but you can see these are three separate shots. So a pan to the right, a pan to the left, um, a static shot, I guess, and then a pan up and down. But you can see that overall, the environment stays very consistent 
despite these being three separate shots, or four separate shots, I guess. Now, in terms of using stable diffusion video, you do have a number of options. If you wanna run it locally, probably the easiest thing to do is to use Pinocchio. Now, on the one hand, if you're not already familiar with Comfy UI, you will need to spend some time exploring that workflow if you decide to go this route. But the plus side to using Pinocchio is that it is one-click installing. Literally, once you have Pinocchio downloaded, all you'll need to do is open it up and come over to Stable Video Diffusion, click on that, and then hit download. Now, this does only currently support NVIDIA GPUs, so if you're on the Mac side, you're kind of out of luck for now. That said, I believe that there should be a Mac version sometime next week. Now, you can also try it out for free on Hugging Face. Um, it is the stable video diffusion space down here. Simply click on that. From here, simply upload an image. Um, and then once that's uploaded, hit the generate button. Now, the thing is that since this is on Hugging Face, um, chances are you will probably run into too many user errors unless you're you know on completely off peak time. Um, so another option for you, you can head over to Replicate, which is kind of my non-local go-to for stable diffusion video. Via Replicate, you can run a number of generations for free. At some point, they will ask you to pay though the price is actually pretty reasonable. I think it's about seven cents per output. Just to run you through Replicate really quickly, once you have your image uploaded, you'll have the choice between using either the 14 frame stable diffusion video or the 25 frame stable diffusion video. You then have a few selections in terms of your aspect ratio, either maintaining it, cropping to 16.9, or to use the image dimensions. Frames per second is where you can play with the output length of your video. I know that's not a ton to play with but um you know obviously if you crank it up to 24 or above you're looking at a one second video uh, as you start moving the frame rate down to say 12 you can buy a two second video um, and then lower than that for a three or possibly even four second video motion bucket would be the overall amount of motion in your outputted video. Obviously, the higher you crank it, the more motion you will see. The lower you crank it, the less motion you will see. Conditional augmentation here controls the amount of noise that's added to your initial input image. Uh, the more noise you add in at the beginning, the more varied your results are going to be. I would just leave that at the default of two, which seems to have a lot of temporal consistency. Decoding T has to do with the amount of frames that are decoded at any one time. It is set to 14, um, but you know, you can feel free to play around with it if you want. Try 21, try seven, see what happens. And in terms of video upscaling and interpolation, well, as it turns out, you actually don't need to leave Replicate in order to do that. Uh, for interpolation, you can use Rife Video Interpolation. I've used this on the channel in the past. It does work very well. And there is also a video upscaler that will take your videos up to 2K or 4K. Uh, links for both of these are down below. Coming up for stable diffusion video, there are improvements that are already being made to the model, such as text to video, 3D mapping, and of course, longer video outputs. And look, I know that shorter video length is not thrilling anyone. Uh, just remember, this is all just getting started. Uh, that said, if you do want to extend your video clips, we do have a tool for that as well. So finalframe.net has been around for a while now. I want to say it popped up shortly after we got the ability to do image to video in both Gentoo and Pika and was developed as sort of a hack to be able to extend your initial video clips beyond four seconds. So just to clear the slate and show you how this all works, uh, Benjamin DeCraker, the creator of Final Frame, has added in this AI image to video tab. Uh, hit that. We upload an image and then, you know, Final Frame begins processing it. And obviously we now have that image in motion. Now here's where things get interesting is we can come up to this add video tab and add in say something from Gen 2. And once that video has been processed, you can see in the project preview tab that these two clips are now merged together. Now, obviously from here, you can add in more video or do more AI image to videos. What's kind of cool is that you've got a timeline here where you can rearrange your clips if you want to. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call this editing per se. It's more like arranging a string out. Uh, once you're happy with everything, you can just hit the export full timeline button. Uh, and indeed you have everything strung together as one continuous file. 
So a couple of quick things. You'll note that there is a save project, open project, and new project button. I have spoken to Benjamin about this. Those don't work yet, so just as an FYI. So if you do close your browser, you will lose the work that you've put in. So just be careful there. That said, those features will be coming along. Something to keep in mind is that Final Frame is the project of one person. So, you know, let's, let's give him some latitude here. But these are the types of tools and projects that I really like to showcase on the channel, things that are indie made and you know developed by someone from the community. So if you have a moment, head on over to finalframe.net. Uh, currently, the exporting of the final frame is free and the AI image to video is also free, but limited to 10 GPU credits per user. Um, that's mostly because it's in the beta phase and Benjamin is asking for suggestions and feedback to improve Final Frame. So that's another crazy day of AI video advancements. Hey, if you haven't had a chance, please do hit the like and subscribe button. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.